This is the Acer Aspire L310. Um, I guess you'd call it an early attempt at a net top. Very small, compact. I was upgrading the memory and I made a mess of it. So I'm going to do some repair work and some more upgrades at the same time. All right, first things first, this one screw here holds the lid on. Uh, you can see the uh, drive cage, nifty little handle here, and there's one screw right down in there which holds the drive cage down. This lid, the front uh, temp uh, face is held on by three clips. That comes off. Leave it there now, for now. Be very careful when lifting this off. This is this is where I messed up. There's a uh, cable that connects with the CD burner comes in right here I busted the uh, I busted the clip which holds this and made a mess of the cable too if you have a cigar box or a Bible size book something the size of this I'd recommend just laying it off to one side for the while you work on the computer just as a convenience if you want to remove it it's called a flat flex cable flat flexible cable you can look it up on Wikipedia and uh, it's connected to the motherboard and to this by a, a ZIF connector zero insertion force connector those tricky little devils. Easy to break, snap off, as I found out. All right, back to the front panel. It's connected by this wire, runs through this hole right here and into this connector. If you have nimble fingers, you can just work it off. Otherwise, just grab a uh, tweezers or a part puller and uh, lift it off and work it out. The connector isn't notched or keyed or anything so just remember the wire orientation for when you have to put it back in. Alright, now we see the guts of it. Memory there, uh, standard notebook memory, PC fit, DDR2 fit, PC 5300 uh, the wireless card slot right here it's not a mini PCI Express slot it's a mini PCI slot which limits you uh, south bridge north bridge and the CPU heat sink which is, uh, is held down by four spring screws Alright, here it is with the lid off. Uh, standard ZIF socket, the ZIF that most people are used to. And the bottom of the heat sink right there. We're going to clean that off. I have some uh, thermal grease and some cleaner from Arctic Clean. Although I suppose the, the rubbing alcohol that people buy at 
drug stores would do just as well. And we're going to be replacing the Celeron D 3.2 gigahertz based on the cedar mill with this Celeron 450 2.2 gigahertz. Uh, it's uh, the 450 is based on the Conroe architecture, so even though it's rated slower, it's actually going to outperform the CPU and run a little uh, cooler to boot. I suppose I could have gotten away with something a little more modern, but there's a couple of limiting factors. First, the chipset. You can look up at the Intel site what uh, CPUs are compatible with the chipset. Also, the BIOS. The BIOS on this thing is a couple of years old. And they haven't uh, done anything. They haven't updated it. So I feel pretty. I feel pretty confident this is a safe bet. Okay, the CPU is greased up. The new one is greased up and bolted down. So onto the drive cage. It uses a standard uh, hard drive, internal hard drive, three and a half inch. Uh, I guess the new ones, the Revos that they've made, use laptop hard drives. I haven't looked at them real close. I'm going to replace this with a uh, one of the new Western Digital Green drives, since I'm going for a cool and quiet mod, and. I'm going to replace this uh, fending connector that I busted. Okay, the new dry, uh, hard drive is in. Uh, the new connector is bolted down, and I put some uh, little heat wrap around my new flat flex cable. So everything's ready to go. I was about ready to give up on this project until I found a uh, reseller in Canada who had the parts. So, yay Canada. Here's the zip connector here. Uh, some connectors, you can look it up on the internet, you have to raise them slightly at each end. This particular one pivots. So, take a pick or a precision flathead and just get under there and very gently lift. And then slide your cable in and snap it back down. Better yet, just avoid the thing entirely by putting it off to one side if you can. I put in a, uh, an Acronis boot disc and we'll see how. Ah! Success. Alright. The DVD burner takes power and it reads data and the CPU is accepted and the memory is still good. So we're good to go. All finished and ready to go. The only thing left to do is to tear off these uh, Celeron D and Windows XP stickers. I haven't really decided what to do, what operating system to put on here. It wasn't designed, it wasn't spec to be a home theater PC or a gaming PC or any other kind of serious video work. It was just designed to be a light duty, general purpose home PC. I think I'll either put uh, Windows Home Server on here or maybe Windows 7. In any case, this is the end of the repair and upgrade.